Hi, my dear doers. As we saw, bombs were the first step for stealthy wood. Now it's time to automate the production of my goods, and I want a more depth analysis of the process. To achieve that, I'll create some work centers and routings. But why should we use routings? Well, because they have records of the production operations or stages that I must follow to produce the finished product. Doing so will allow us to record the time spent on each manufacturing action and know what the next step is. It also adds a new view where I can add instructions related to the work to avoid any possible mistakes. These steps are usually created by the engineering manufacturing department. After everything is done, I can look at the details and keep track of everything we did and need to do now to make it better. With an easy to use and intuitive interface, I'll see how I can set everything up in just minutes. All right, here I am on my database, specifically looking at the manufacturing application. From here, let's go straight to configuration settings, and we're going to activate the option work orders. Okay, this will give us the possibility to add some routings or work centers. All right, and then from there, we're going to actually create some work centers. So if I want to add some routes to my manufacturing process, I will um, need some work centers such as one for semi-finished products and one for the final product. And this is up to the manufacturing engineering team to decide what the route will be. Uh, by doing this, they can give the instructions to the manufacturing operators so the manufacturing operators know how to do each operation and at which work center it needs to be done. So let's go ahead and set that up by going to Master Data and Work Centers or clicking on Work Centers right here. And we're going to create a new one. Okay, and I'm going to call this first one uh, finished products because it will be for my finished products. Easy enough. And I'm going to give it a short code as well, FP for finished products. I can even specify if I would like to add an alternative work center, um, but which can be used as a substitute if necessary. I can even specify the working hours. Okay, and the company if I'm in a multi-company environment. And then down below, we have some general general information, excuse me. Um, so first of all, we have the time efficiency. Um, so for example, if you expect the work will take an hour, and it actually took an hour, then the efficiency is 100%. But if it took two hours, then the efficiency is 50%. Okay, so you have that field here. And if at any point you aren't really sure what a field uh, does, you can always hover over it and you'll have um, a longer definition or explanation right there. So if at any point you're going through do and you're not sure of a field, you can always try to see if there's a definition added by hovering over it. So for example, for capacity, it says number of pieces that can be produced in parallel. Okay, so you have those small definitions. And then we have the um, OEE target as well. And I talk about that in detail in another video. So be sure you check it out. Okay, then we have the cost per hour, which we can add and also time before prod and time after prod. Now I'm going to add some time before, okay, let's say 15 minutes. And this is going to be whoops, 15 minutes, not five. And this is going to be added um, to my timesheet uh, for the setup. Okay, so I'm going to say 15 minutes here, I can add a description as well. So this looks good. So let's go ahead and save and create another one for my semi finished products. Okay, the short code here is going to be SP. Okay, I'm going to keep everything the same, but I will add 15 minutes as a time before production as well. All right, and then I'm going to save. Now you're going to notice that I have some smart buttons here. And there, I don't have any data yet, so it all says zero, but this will help us keep track of what's happening with our specific work centers. So once I start um, going through operations using these work centers, then I'm going to have some add data added here. All right, so I have my two work centers. And if I go to my manufacturing dashboard, I'm actually going to have an overview of all of my work centers. Okay, and I will have this overview once I activate that um, option in the settings page. Okay, before that, I would see uh, my manufacturing orders that I need to do. But now I have this beautiful overview. Okay. And I have all of my settings, which I can quickly access here as well. I have my reports, actions, and then I can access the actual settings page easily from this overview. All right, but 
Now let's go ahead and create a routing that is going to use both of those work sensors that we just created. So I'm going to go back to master data and the routings and create. Okay, we need a name for our routing. I'm going to keep it simple as always and just call this table. I'm going to use this routing for the um, for my table, which I manufacture. Okay, and then we can add some operations. So let's go ahead and add a line. Okay, the first operation is going to be mount table. So this is where I will assemble the base of the table. So I'll put all the legs together and so on. And then I need to choose my work center. Okay, so this is going to be uh, in the semi-finished products work center. Okay, and once I've done that, I can also decide uh, how I would like to compute the duration. Okay, so I can say if I would like to set the duration manually, which I have here. So the default duration is 60 minutes. I can change this, of course, or I can even compute this based on real time. So uh, what's happening on uh, my work orders. So right now it says this will be based on the last 10, but let's go ahead and make it based on the last five. All right, I don't have any work orders yet, so the default duration will still be 60 minutes until I start um, collecting some data. Then we can decide when we should start the next operation. Okay, so for this routing, of course, we're gonna have multiple operations. So I will have an operation that comes after this, and I can say I would like to start it once all of the products are processed in this operation, or once some of the products are processed. Now, of course, if I select that second option, I'm gonna need to specify the quantity. Okay, down below we also have our description for the operation and we can even add a worksheet as well. Okay, this is really useful. This is where I can upload uh, my instructions for the operation. I don't have any yet. But that's okay because I can always come back later and upload it. Okay, now we're gonna click on save and new. I'm gonna add my second operation, which will be mount tabletop. Okay, and the work center is going to be finished products. Okay, because it's the last step. Once I mount that tabletop, I will have a complete and beautiful table. Okay, I'm going to keep everything the way it is, except actually, I am going to compute based on real time. And then we're going to save and close. Now, once we're looking at our operations here, something that's really important to keep in mind is the sequence. The first operation will happen first, of course. And so I need to be sure it's at the top of the list. I can easily drag and drop the operations where I need them to be. Okay, but this looks good for now. And so we're gonna click on save. Okay, now we have this beautiful routing. And what do we do next? We add it to the bill of material. So let's go to master data and then bills of materials. Okay, I'm gonna choose my make to order table. Right now the routing is assemble furniture, but let's go ahead and remove that and add the one that we just created. Great. Okay, it's all set, it's good to go. So let's see this in action. Let's actually manufacture this table and see how this is processed. Okay, so we're gonna go to operations, manufacturing orders and create a new one for the make to order table. Okay, whoops. Make to order table, it's right here. Okay, we have all of our products from the bill of material. So we're gonna save this, mark as to do. I'm gonna check the availability. Okay, everything is available except for my tabletop. And that's normal because I actually do need to first uh, manufacture the tabletop before I can manufacture the finished product. So let's quickly do that. I'm gonna to go to my manufacturing orders. One is already created for me for the tabletop. Okay, I can check the availability of my raw material and produce. Okay, mark it as done. That's an important step. And then we can go back and plan um, the manufacturing order here since we have everything available. So we're gonna click on plan. Okay, and I see that I have two work orders. Okay, I have two operations, I have two work centers, I have two work orders, it makes sense. Now I can always see which one should go first by checking out my work center overview. I see that I have one to launch um, in the semi-finished products, but let's have an easier view. Let's go back to the manufacturing order. Okay, our two work orders so that we can see both of them related to this manufacturing order at once. All right, 
I see that I have one ready. So that's the one in the semi-finished products work center that we just saw. And I have another manufacturing order, uh, sorry, another work order that is waiting for the first one to be done before it can be ready to be started. So let's go ahead and process this. Okay, I don't have any instructions, so we don't see anything here. I'm gonna mark as done. The next one is ready to go. Okay, so we're redirected back to this page so we can start it instantly. All right, that's super convenient. Okay, and then we're gonna process this as well. Okay, I'm gonna validate. Before I mark as done, I of course will need to add a serial number for this item because I do track my table um, by serial number. Okay, and then I'm gonna mark as done. I also have the option to mark as done and close the manufacturing order, but I want to check out the manufacturing order first. Okay, so we go back to our table. Everything looks good. We've consumed everything we've needed to consume, everything we reserved. Okay, we have our finished product here with that lot or serial number that I added um, when I was in that work center, when I was processing that work order. I have the two that are completed here. So I think we're really good to go. So let's mark this as done. And it's just as easy as that. Of course, we can always access the work orders again. Okay, let's go back to our dashboard and we can keep track of everything that's going on. We can go ahead um, and look at the reports for these specific work centers. So as you could see, that whole flow was so easy to set up. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.